everyone. Welcome to the Food for Thought Friday today. It has been a while since I have recorded one of these, and I usually only record the Food for Thought Friday when I am feeling very inspired by a specific topic or subject. So this Food for Thought is actually a collection of about four days of my personal journal entries that I did when I went away to Tennessee to partake in the MBT Immersive Experience. So MBT stands for My Big Toe. And I want to tell you a little bit about what the MBT Immersive Experience is so you have an understanding as to what maybe I was going through and why I decided to journal this experience because it was pretty intense. So the website that you can go to if you are interested in actually attending one of these is mbtimmersive.com. And the MBT Immersive Experience is an intensive multi-day program specially created by physicist, consciousness explorer, and my big toe author, Tom. Campbell. Some of you might be familiar with him. We uh, actually have him in all three of our documentaries for the Path Trilogy series. And Tom is helping people in this experience to learn how to explore and interact with what he calls the LCS, or also known as the Larger Consciousness System. He uses specifically created by neural beats that he made himself and takes the attendees on an amazing journey of self-discovery through a series of programs with different objectives and goals such as how to reach and hold point consciousness, how to develop a good working relationship with the LCS, larger consciousness system, how to communicate telepathically in both the physical and non-physical, how to access the past and probable future databases, and you will hear in my journal recordings that that was the most significant for me, how to gather evidence for remote viewing, diagnosing, and healing, which was a ton of fun. And the exercises are intended for the exploration of consciousness and our abilities as such, and not to replace professional or medical help or to treat or diagnose or cure any illness. That's not why attendees are going there. Um, But Tom is there with us every step of the way from the dinner that we have on the first night uh, to breakfast to lunch, and then the final morning we had an opportunity to ask him questions. So it was an amazing experience. I had a feeling there was some something that was going to be pretty intense for me. I know a lot of people all over the world are now attending and taking his immersive experience. They have waiting lists. Um, It's amazing. They already have a waiting list, I think, for 2020. They're going to be in Italy, in Tennessee, uh, Cancun. Uh, They just are trying to find places that can hold enough participants. So I thought it would be great not only to help them uh, spread the word a little bit, but to also share my experience. I wanted it documented. um, And I knew that there was just going to be too much for me to actually journal and write down because we were in these sessions like for 12 hours. So when I had a chance in between, I would get onto my laptop, grab my microphone and just start to record in the moment what I was feeling, experiencing and thinking after each of the binaural beat sessions. So I hope you find it interesting. It'll give you a sneak peek into how it helped me to heal and transform in a matter of four days, and I'm still continuing to use all the information that I gathered from this training. So I am forever grateful for Tom Campbell. Again, the website is mbtimmersive.com. Check it out, and uh, maybe you'll want to sign up for one. So I hope you guys enjoy. Day one of my journaling for the MBT Immersive Program Exploring the Larger Reality with Tom Campbell. So I had my first session with the binaural beats, and it was pretty intense. Um, Before beginning, Tom talked to us, and one of the most, I guess, helpful things that he said that kept running through my mind as I was trying to do this was engage everything. So anything that we were experiencing to just try to play with it and engage in it. We're also trying to hold the state of point consciousness, which is when you get to that point where you're just not trying to be analytical or evaluate anything, your senses kind of go away and you're just at the being level. So I'm still trying to understand and and access that and wonder if I did or if I didn't, but just wanted to share uh, some things that happened. Um, 
So one of the first things that happened was I had a lot of uh, physical body sensations. So as I'm having these physical sensations, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be having them or not, because then I kind of thought like, okay, maybe I was doing it wrong. But as Tom said, you know, just engage with it. So when I would have uh, full body chills or a pain in any area, I would just get very curious about it and say, okay, you know, what is that? And after a few times of that happening, I noticed I wasn't feeling any more physical body sensations. Um, In the very beginning, though, when it first started, I was excited to maybe see something, and I was seeing nothing, and all that I saw was black. But then again, I heard Tom's words that says, engage everything. So I just engaged the black that I saw. And then from there, I started getting many different visuals. And um, he also talked about that it's okay to use your imagination and to not be overly concerned with where that information is coming from. If it's, if you're imagining it, if it's something coming from the larger consciousness system or coming from something else. So I just allowed myself to be very childlike and uh, be, be very curious, kind of doing the oohs and ahs and, oh, look at that, and what's that over there? And as soon as I would get curious and engage, uh, the image would change again to something else. So it was kind of like rapid fire. I had a pretty intense experience, that, and it's still kind of unraveling as to maybe what it all means and why it was helpful for me. It's another thing that Tom keeps saying over and over, that if you engage in something, you kind of want to ask with what's going on. How is this helpful? Is there something here for me to learn? And if it's pointless or useless and you're not getting anything, to just kind of back out of where you are and try a different approach or try again. So um, in the very beginning as well, I felt that there was an entity at the side of my bed. And when I was a young girl, and even into my 20s, I would be visited a lot by what appeared to be ghosts or entities or beings. And for a split second, I just felt like that really scared child. Um, But then I remembered, okay, I'm not going to be hurt. Um, I'm having this experience, this training. We're supposed to probably run into things like this to challenge our fear. So I just decided to uh, interact with it. And I used my imagination and turned this being into Tom and just decided that, oh, that's just him kind of splitting off and going into everybody's room, checking on us, making sure we're okay. And I felt calmer about that. And then the being continued to stay there and was breathing on me. And I was just observing. But again, I remember we're supposed to engage everything. So I began to engage the being and I said, well, who are you and why are you here? And then it asked me where I wanted to go. And we are in these beautiful cabins. Um, I can't even begin to explain it. You'd have to go online to see how beautiful they are. And there's a pool and a jacuzzi. And um, as Tom says, like this is an immersive and an intensive program. So we're not going to get a chance to really have a lot of uh, free time while we're exploring here. So I decided that I wanted to go down to the jacuzzi. So I had the being take me down there and I enjoyed the nice warm water and felt my muscles relaxing and just kind of had a lot of fun with that. As we were, uh, going back and having a chance to have coaching with Tom is where we get a chance to process everything. I had a little bit of an aha moment. And what I realized was, Um, this whole experience in this very first session has allowed me to be more childlike. Now, for those of you who have followed me, you might have heard me before say to some authors um, of books that I've read that it can be very hard sometimes for me to play. I tend to have more of a serious personality. And as I'm processing this being, being by my bed and feeling like that little girl and scared, um, you know, what I'm putting together is some of my trauma when I was very young. I would be left alone at night, and I probably, when I would feel or see or sense those beings, I was more scared that possibly somebody was breaking into our house because I knew I was all alone, Um, and I didn't want to play with those beings because I was too afraid. So to be here and to know that I'm safe and then to interact with that being, then I was able to play and open up a little bit more, go down to the jacuzzi, check out this place, and just kind of have fun with this being as opposed to being afraid of it. Um, One of my intentions, and I have many of them and feel kind of confused that I have so many intentions for this program, I just feel like I'm here and I want to heal everything. Um, Just trying to find my notes, but couple of things that I wrote down as to like, what is my why? 
um, you know, what do I want to learn here? Um, what am I hoping to get information about? And some of my goals was to try to figure out, oh, here it is, that I want a better understanding of how my own ego um, can block me from becoming more love. And I'm also wanting to know a little bit more about maybe where parts of the ego get stuck in either my old story or trauma. And my other intent is to be able to learn more about those places that I may not have totally moved through. So if I'm moving through some of that old stuff quicker, then I will hopefully be able to bring my clients through their trials, tribulations, and trauma quicker as well. And then when I think about evolving as a whole consciousness, that's what we're in dire need of. We need the whole consciousness system, everyone here on earth to kind of raise their vibration and come closer to love. And I guess what I got out of this too was um, the larger consciousness system taught me how to play again. So it felt very, very childlike for me. And I think that that's a really good thing for me because it shows where I am releasing the fear. So a lot of old fears from childhood um, came up. So I'm pretty exhausted coming back from the Afterlife Awareness Conference, traveling, getting on a plane, waking up at 3 a.m., and it is almost 11 p.m. tonight, and this program is super intensive. Uh, we do breakfast at 9 a.m., or we're ready to go at 9 a.m., we eat before, and we're basically going um, until about 10, 11 o'clock every night. So I am hoping to do a little journal after each of my binaural beat sessions if I have time uh, just to process this and share this. So I have a recording for myself and also uh, to share with others and hope that my experience will help somebody else. Okay, so this is day two of the MBT Immersive Exploring the Larger Reality with Thomas Campbell. Um, just checking in, just finished lunch, and uh, day two, we are learning how to communicate telepathically uh, to entities, so physical entities and non-physical entities, meaning... Uh, physical entities might be my best friend or people who are here with me in this reality and I'm um, playing around with and trying to send them messages and see if they'll get them. Uh, Non-physical uh, entities would be people who are out there in the non-physical reality. So, so far I have spent about three hours in binaural beat sessions. So we get about a 50 minute session. We come down, we get some coaching from Tom and hear other people's experiences, and then we go back into it again. So after lunch, it <clears throat> looks like I have three or four more uh, to do today. Which is pretty intense, um, and it's it's pretty cool so far. Uh, the different binaural beats are different beat frequencies as well, so some of them will have higher tones, some of them are lower. Um, the last one I had the trouble, <clears throat> the most trouble with, which was white noise. And um, we had a couple today that were lower beat frequencies, which seemed to be a little bit better for me. Um, one experience that I had, which was pretty cool, and it was a piggyback off of last night, day one, was anytime I'm listening to the binaural beats, I'm having some physical sensations throughout my body. And for day two, we have to set an intent of you know, who we want to communicate with and why. And sometimes a good intention would be to try to communicate with entities that can help you to see your fears or see where your blocks are. I came across some entities and I asked them who their names were and they called themselves the Blue Healers. Now, I had a couple of sessions, I want to say, in the past couple of years with some clients during Reiki where I would see these blue beings that were very kind and helping me to work on my clients' bodies. But I didn't know that they were called the Blue Healers. But when I met these people during my binaural beat session, and when I say people, really entities, non-physical beings, I asked them for their name. And they said, we are the Blue Healers. So I was asking for more information about what's going on with my physical body, why am I feeling so many physical sensations, and they said to me that as I'm feeling these different sensations, they are working to extract energy that I have stored there uh, over the past probably 15 years of clients 
who have come in and have told me stories that might have been pretty heavy for me to hear. And they said that this extraction process was going to take about three weeks after uh, the weekend here today and to not be concerned and not be worried. So I asked, well, what can I do to help this process? And they said, anytime you start to feel us working on you, just begin to breathe into that area, and that will help us to move the energy out. So I thought that that was really cool. And I would say that that's probably the most dramatic and interesting session that I've had so far. And now after lunch, we are going to focus on the afternoon objective. And a lot of this work is using our inf- our imagination and trying to just be, which is hard for those of us who have the analytical mind. So we are going to be continuing to work on that in the afternoon. We have um, another two sessions this afternoon, actually three, I believe, and then dinner. And then we are usually on our own to explore a little bit at night. And at nighttime, we are allowed to listen to any or all or continue to listen to all the binaural beats throughout the night. They also created a track for sleep. So um, so that has been my morning on day two so far. Pretty cool stuff. Thank you for listening to this free preview. To hear the rest of this episode in its entirety, visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash path 11 and become a supporter today. When you pledge as little as a dollar per month as a Patreon supporter, you gain access to exclusive interviews, regularly produced guided meditations, future episodes of our weekly podcast before anyone else, and you can also watch our new TV show, Conversations on the Path. This is a one-on-one conversation with interesting people working on interesting projects. Again, that's patreon.com path11. Pledge your support today and help us change the world.